Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of my videos and today I have a really beautiful puzzle to show you. In this position it is white to move and checkmate in only two moves. So white to move and checkmate in only two moves. Just to also clarify as well, black is going down the board. So these pawns are actually ready to promote on the first rank. So see if you can solve it, white to move and checkmate in only two moves. And as always, if you wish to skip straight to the solution, you can do. I'll put the timestamp for that for you to skip to the video. Uh, so let's talk about this puzzle. This is a really beautiful puzzle. This one comes from a player, a composer, sorry, called Johann Scheele. Uh, he uh, produced what we like to call now a grotesque puzzle. What is a grotesque? Well, it's a position like this. It is a totally impossible position well, very, very improbable, shall we say, a uh, position that can occur on the board, uh, but it's got quite a nice, beautiful solution. Normally, one side has got very few pieces. In this particular example, it's not a great example of grotesque, as white has four pieces, which is actually quite a lot. But on the flip side, black has got more pieces, and he's about to promote his five pawns that are somehow made it all the way they've done a huge pilgrimage and got to the second rank so a totally bizarre position but here we are so now there are a ton of checkmate in free solutions here you've probably found a few in your workings out you've probably found uh, a number of them but there is only one checkmate in two I was about to say two but there's only one checkmate in two solutions so Let's have a look at this position. So the first thing you probably notice is, okay, white has got all these lovely pieces and they're all attacking this king. And a very tempting move to play here is, can we do anything with this bishop to create a discovered check or a discovered attack on the black king? But unfortunately, none of these moves really work. So if, let's say, we move this bishop anywhere on this diagonal, we're going to just say c8 for this example. The problem with this is now the king can come to g2. This is the only move it can go to. It's forced. Uh, and there's a bit of an issue. Uh, number one, white would love to maybe get a queen over here and do some sort of kiss of death checkmate. The problem is, is this rook here defends this square h3 really well. And there's another issue. With the king coming to g2, it is now threatening to take here on f1. And if you whack this through an engine, which is quite funny, and let's say we don't do anything about this particular threat, or let's just say with this bishop we take here on b7, which you believe it, this now gives black minus 14.4. So it's winning, definitely winning for black. The reason being is, okay, I move my king here. I've got one of these pawns. I'm probably going to promote maybe two or three of them and win this position. So I thought that was quite funny, uh, despite the fact that it looks like a very, <laughs> uh, very weird position for black, a very hard defensive task, this position. This is actually totally winning for black here. OK, so going back, so we do have to be a little bit careful of this. So in actual fact, after bishop to c8 and the king comes here, the engine kind of goes, OK, uh, you've had your fun, but OK, it's only checkmate in three now. And essentially, we have to go back with the bishop. The king comes here and we can, well, we've repeated the position in here. If you do take the rook as well, I guess you could do this. Uh, it does lead to checkmate in three and it's not two. So that's a kind of simpler way of proving that this position does not work. OK, so going back, what can we do instead? So that move does not work. I'll just go back to the start. So the other uh, ideas that I was looking at is, OK, well, we want to get maybe our queen to one of these dark squares. I'm just going to highlight uh, a few of these squares, but there's a bit of an issue. Uh, our queen's on a light square, so a queen can't get up to a dark square uh, on this diagonal so easily. So I thought to myself, well, OK, is there a way I could maybe play a, like a sort of quiet looking move, maybe put my queen onto b6, for example, and threaten just to come to, to c6. 
The problem with this is it's all to do with our pawns here. Remember, they can, can become anything. They become a queen, so they can find a way to block this position. So if our queen comes to b6, although we're threatening to come to two different squares here, uh-oh, this queen promotes, uh, well, this pawn promotes to a queen, and it doesn't matter where our queen, queen goes. If it goes to c7, we can throw our queen in the way. This funny enough comes with check as well. Okay, the queen can take this. This is checkmate, but it's checkmate in three. It's not two. It's three, not two. So, what else could white do here? So another idea I had not, I thought about was, okay, well, I can't go to maybe these two squares. What about if I just try and come to f4? And I thought this was a really good solution. I thought, hey, this looks like it's going to win. Uh, how is black going to stop me from getting to f4? Maybe you could find a way for black to stop white from getting to f4. And then it will hit you. G5. <laughs> I just thought this was so cool. And what's really cool about this is this pawn now stops the queen from coming to f4. And now you begin to see why this pawn was on e5. Because now this queen can't come to e5 either. And it's just a simple way of stopping this checkmate in, uh, in, two, in two moves. So I thought that was really interesting. I thought it was really interesting. Okay, so the queen, the bishop, neither of these moves work. So what else can we do? Well, okay, I think if we move this rook around, that's not going to really do a whole lot for our position. Uh, so what can we do about this rook? I think that the key to our solution has to be something to do this rook. Well, you might have noticed if I move this rook along this, uh, this rank, I have a way of winning. Uh, in one move with a d discovered checkmate of our bishop. And it's a bit different this time because when we went over here, we uh, the king could run to g2. But this time, if we could get our, qu our bishop to f1, the king has no way of getting to the g2 square. So we have a look. So let's say the rook comes here. There's a bit of a problem for black. If he doesn't make a good move, let's say he comes with the pawn here, for example. This is going to be checkmate in one move. There is a problem though. There's only one of these moves works. The reason why is if let's say we move our rook to e1, we can promote f takes on e1, promotion to a queen. And what's fascinating about this is if the bishop comes to f1, this is check, but it's not checkmate because the queen can jump in the way. Ah, so close. So this is checkmate in three, but it's not in two. The same problem happens if we move our rook here. The pawn takes us away again. Again, the queen defends this diagonal. Similar thing with c1. The pawn takes here. The queen defends this diagonal. And the same problem. And actually, it becomes a, with a bit more of uh, a bit more oomph, this one. Because now we can take here, and we're threatening this rook. Uh, so this would not work because we just take the rook. What's fascinating about this, though, is uh, you can still checkmate. It's a checkmate in the six, in case you're wondering. So here we would actually take this bishop. The king has, well, I think the best way to survive this position is to start to run with the king. King to g3. Now we can throw a check. Queen to d3 to block it. And OK, the king tries to survive for a few more moves. But we will eventually checkmate with g3. This is quite nice. It's a checkmate in six, but it's not a checkmate in two. I've probably said that for like 50 times now already. But anyway, let's go back. So we've discussed all of these rook moves, but there is one rook move that does work, and that is the move here. Now, again, what, what's fascinating about this is if we now take here. This does not work anymore because the queen has no way of jumping in the way of the rook. So whatever, uh, well, after we've done this, we just win simply with bishop to f1. This is checkmate. So this is a really, really nice solution. There's no other moves that can save black here. He's got no way of promoting maybe to something weird like a, I don't know, a queen or a knight to try and block uh, this, uh, this rook here. I will explore one more solution here, though that is fascinating. What about if black doesn't promote any of these pawns? What if he tries something else? What if he tries to move this bishop, let's say, to c8? And this is probably where some of you might have got a bit stumped. 
The problem with this being now, if we try and throw in this check, well, it's only a check. It's not checkmate because now the bishop can jump in the way. And okay, it's checkmate in three, but it's not in two. So what can black do in this position? Well, this is where it gets fascinating. Because this bishop has moved off this diagonal, what does it open up to us? It opens up these dark squares to our queen, particularly this dark square. So now we can checkmate with our bishop on b8. This is checkmate. And it doesn't matter where this bishop goes to. Let's say it goes to, I don't know, all the way to g3. We can still promote on b8. This threat of queen to b8 can be played no matter where this bishop goes along this diagonal. It doesn't matter where it goes. So there we go. That is the grotesque puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was more interesting than you thought it was going to be. I thought you probably looked at it and thought, well, wow, it looks like a stupid position. Actually, it is a lot of fun, this position. There's lots of fun little solutions uh, and different variations to go through. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this. If you like what you see, make sure you leave a like. Share with us a friend. This is a great little puzzle to share with a friend because it will really challenge them with their chess skills. And as always, if you like what you see, share this. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, as this will tell you of any new videos that I'll publish on my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take care.